स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू जनरल पैथोलॉजी सेशन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ स्मॉल टॉपिक दैट इज योर टिश्यू हीलिंग दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक पर्टेनिंग टू योर योर जनरल पैथोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रेड एग्जामिनेशन टिश्यू हीलिंग बीइंग आस्क्ड एज अ लॉन्ग एसे क्वेश्चन एंड लेट्स सी व्हाट्स देयर इन टिश्यू हीलिंग व्हाट टू राइट इन टिश्यू हीलिंग एंड नाउ व्हाट अबाउट हीलिंग हीलिंग यू मे बी नो दैट हीलिंग इज एक्चुअली uh body is responds to an injury okay so the body respond to an injury by uh, healing i have told you when the cell it has a, a small dose of uh, injury or small stressful state uh, it can go to a stage called a reversible cell injury and the stress is removed and favorable condition is given the cell can uh, heal or cell can come back to the normal stage by a process called healing so it is an attempt of the cell to restore its normal function and the normal structure okay so it's an attempt of the a cell to restore the normal function and structure after a injury okay so uh, what is there in uh, healing how can a cell uh, restore its structure and function healing can occur in two ways either it can regenerate or it can repair okay either it can regenerate or it can repair now what do you mean by regeneration is that it can uh, the cells the other cells present there they can proliferate and they can give back the lost structure okay the lost normal structure is regenerated so healing is taking by the proliferation of the cells there the parenchymal cells present there they will restore the lost structure okay there is complete restoration of the original tissues whichever is lost during the injury but repair is that it is from not from the uh, parenchymal tissues some connective tissue cells there they are trying to close that defect okay the defect is closed or it is uh, uh, repaired okay it is not regenerating what is lost we are not getting back what is lost but the defect is already repaired defect is closed by some kind of tissue okay so healing takes by the proliferation of connective tissue and the defect is closed by fibrosis or scarring there forms a scar so scar is not a regeneration scar is just a repair okay so that's all about regeneration so what are the requirements to regenerate there are some kind of cellular growth factors which is helping in your regeneration what are the growth factors which help the other parenchymal cells to start proliferating there are so many growth factors your epidermal fibroblast platelet derived endothelial and transforming okay all these are names of the growth factors secreted by the parenchymal cells for the proliferation now what about repair here the repair is not through your proliferation of your parenchymal cell it is not through the growth factors the repair is by replacement of the low structure by some kind of fibrous tissue some kind of fibrous tissue is helping in the repair and that can occur by either a granulation tissue formation and by contraction of the wound so there is a big wound here so if it is a big wound uh, some kind of granulation tissue is formed inside and there is a contraction of this wound will close the wound defect so that is what happen in your repair now repair uh, occurs by a combination of many cells your mesenchymal cells present in the area your connective tissue cell your fibroblast your histiocytes all the cells will be coming there is endothelial cell which will help in the proliferation of your blood vessels new new blood vessels will come macrophages what is the function of this macrophages they remove the dead and the debris from that area they remove the dead cells they remove the debris from that area and make the wound area very clean there will be platelets platelets will help you in hemostasis okay from for the homeostasis hemostasis and they will uh, release some kind of platelet derived growth factors and the parenchymal cells of the injured organ together they will cause the repair okay now coming to the granulation tissue what do you mean by a granulation tissue for so granulation tissue formation is that when the wound is large if there is a large wound okay if there is a large wound and this is a small wound and this is a large wound so here in the small wound a incision is made 
okay the the healing of this area will occur without any granulation tissue formation means it is it will close by uh, your primary intention or it will close by uh, without the formation of a granulation tissue we will see what is the difference between a primary closure and a secondary closure but if the wound is large then the defect should be filled with some kind of tissue the defect is filled by some kind of tissue and that tissue is called granulation tissue so granulation tissue formation occurs in three phases there is phase of inflammation there is phase of clearance and there is formation or growth of this granulation tissue now let's see what are the things happening in the stage of inflammation so whenever there is a wound formation the first stage is that the area is getting inflamed okay whenever there is a trauma the blood clot is formed at the site of injury the platelet will come the platelet will block the blood vessel platelet will prevent the bleeding they form a clot there and this clot will attract other inflammatory cells your neutrophils your lymphocytes okay especially your neutrophils lymphocytes monocytes they all come to that area that is the phase of inflammation now the site is inflamed now what next now is comes the phase of clearance now we have to clear the area we have to make the area clean the neutrophils eosinophil your macrophages all the inflammatory cells will remove the dead and devital tissue from there they will remove the microorganism from there okay all these are cleared so the proteolytic enzymes liberated from the neutrophil they will remove certain proteins or unwanted proteins or damaged proteins spread there the autolytic enzymes from the dead and devital tissue okay all these uh, enzymes present there will destroy or clear off the damaged protein there there is a phagocytic activity of this macrophages i have told you what is the function of this macrophages they will eat up phagocytes okay phagocyte phagocytic activity the phagocytosis means that the macrophage will eat okay they will engulf the the devitalized dead tissues there or dead cells there or the bacterial debris there or the foreign body there okay they will eat up all this and clear that area to make that area sterile okay now that is clearance okay now inflammation is there the area is cleared now what happens there is formation of a granulation tissue now how a granulation tissue is formed you need two things one is that you need new blood vessels and proliferation of cells in that area more cells should be proliferated more blood vessels should be coming there to give nutrition to that proliferating cells so new nutrition there is angiogenesis and neovascularization neovascularization means new blood vessels should be formed vascular channels new vascular channels should be formed and then there is fibrogenesis you should the cells will make collagen fibers okay collagen fibers will be formed so these are the two steps so in angiogenesis or neovascularization there will be formation of new new small blood vessels these blood vessels be, will bring nutrition to the proliferating cells okay so there is proliferation of new endothelial cells and there is formation of new blood vessels from where they are proliferating the blood vessels at the margins of the uh, wound okay if we have a wound here there are blood vessels in the margins of this wound which are cut so there will be proliferation from these blood vessels new new blood vessels will proliferate and they will come to that area so new new blood vessels will come and that is called neovascularization now coming to the fibrogenesis now blood vessels has come this blood vessels will give nutrition to the cells there your fibroblast cell your histiocytic cell all will get nutrition and what they do they make collagen fibers okay collagen fibers will be formed the in the cells like your myofibroblast your fibroblast which has a uh, myofibroblastic property means they have properties of your muscles also they are myofibroblast this myofibroblast will bind to this a uh, collagen fibrase what is the function of this myofibroblast uh, this myofibroblast will have some protein called actin and myosin okay these are nothing but your muscle proteins this muscle proteins the myofibroblast uh, they will bind to this fibronectin okay or they will bind to this collagen fibers and the myofibroblast will contract they will contract and they will help in the closure of the wound 
closure of wound. So what happens here is there is a wound here. There is collagen fibrils. Okay, the myofibroblast here they will contract and they will pull the uh, two sides of the wound together. Okay, they will help in contraction. Now as more and more collagen is produced there is more and more collagen deposition so once the collagen is uh, deposited once the granulation tissue is filling the defect there is a reduction in this blood uh, blood supply okay so the blood cells uh, blood uh, vessels will reduce okay so once we have more and more collagen the active fibroblast and the blood cells will reduce and the area will get mature okay the area will get mature and that matured area is looking like a scar tissue this is called a inactive scar formation and the formation of a scar is called cicatrization okay cicatrization is the process of formation of a scar cicatrization is a pro process of formation of a scar so this is how a scar is formed this is how a granulation tissue is formed okay and uh, we will see uh, the healing of the important structures first we will see the healing of skin wounds okay how a skin wound is healing now the healing of the skin wound depend upon the type of injury okay see if you have an injury on your hand with a scalpel okay you have a blade you are cutting your hand with a blade that is one type of injury now you have a hand here you fall or you have a road traffic accident and this much part of your tissue is lost so that wound heal differently from the first type of okay and a wound induced by a scalpel a wound which is induced by a scalpel will heal very fast but a large wound which is caused by a loss of tissue from that area will heal in a different way it will take more time it will heal in a different way now both are uh, healing in a two different ways so there is two types of healing healing by first intention and healing by second intention okay now we'll see what is the main difference between first intention or a primary union or second intention or a secondary union now if you see the example of a primary union it is a first example you are having a wound which is caused by a scalpel okay so it is a, a surgically clean wound a clean wound which is caused by a scalpel no other what there is no tissue loss there no bacteria or nothing there. it is a wound which is produced by a cut in the second case it is a, imagine there is a road traffic accident where there is a tissue loss in that area and that area is unclean okay it is not unclean the margins are very much irregular and it's an unclean wound and in the primary union in the first wound it is generally uninfected but in the second case it is infected the margins of this uh, primary union the first case we have told it is a margins will be surgically very clean so here we have a wound here due to the scalpel and there is another wound here which is having tissue loss okay so i will draw it here so we have a primary union wound which is having a clean wound the secondary union wound we have a tissue loss in that area okay so this is secondary and this is uh, this is primary right? secondary secondary wound and this is a primary wound so here it is a clean wound we have seen a clean wound and the margins are surgically clean and it is uninfected while it is unclean and infected and irregular in a secondary wound. now here we can use sutures sutures can be used to close the wound but if there is a large loss of tissue there we can't use a suture okay sutures cannot be used it should be left open for the healing process so sutures cannot be used in secondary healing now healing cause healing in the first case it is uh, mainly due to primary intention in the primary union there is less amount of granulation tissue scanty amount of granulation tissue we can say that the granulation tissue is not formed in kind of primary wound so very scanty granulation tissue and the the gap the incised gap is uh, filled by its own clot or blood sub, blood okay the wound is filled by blood or clot and they are approximated by sutures but here in the secondary case there is a there should be a presence of granulation tissue the granulation tissue is required for to fill the gap so in secondary union there is formation of granulation tissue to fill the gap 
in the primary union uh, there is no requirement of a granulation tissue the uh, the gap is very small it is just filled by your blood clot and they are approximated by your sutures but in a large wound which cannot be approximated by your sutures there is a requirement of a granulation tissue formation to fill the gap okay and what is the outcome a clean wound or a primary union wound will have a clean neat healing okay there will be only one line of scar you can see but in an accident where there is a large tissue loss what you can see in the end when it heals it will be a irregular large scar okay irregular large scar can be seen now what are the complication the usually no complication in a clean cut wound okay sometimes you can see an epidermal inclusion cyst formation due to your suture some kind of entrapped epithelium that can cause some inclusion cyst now uh, coming to the secondary union a large wound is there more chance of formation of pus okay so it requires surgical debridement so uh, these are the steps uh, in healing of a skin wound first uh, there is active of blood first the blood clot comes and fibrin clot is for the platelet comes your erythrocytes comes fibroblast comes then comes your macrophages your inflammatory stage this is your inflammatory stage okay where uh, your macrophages lymphocytes all come then comes the proliferation proliferation of your new blood vessel see the new blood vessel this is neovascularization can you see the blood vessels proliferating here both blood vessels are proliferating in that area and the granulation tissue is formed this is called neovascularization and in the end there is collagen formation the myofibroblast will come the collagen formation is formed these are the four steps in granulation tissue formation now coming to healing of skin wound what happens now when there is a skin wound healing of skin wound healing by first intention and healing by second intention there is a primary primary wound and a secondary wound healing okay so what are the steps happen so we know that there is a first step is called step of initial hemorrhage first there is hemorrhage means that the the incision area is filled with the blood clot okay here the wound space is filled with the blood clot and it is covered by fibrin so initial step in every wound is that there is a blood clot coming in that area and the blood clot will fill that area now in the next stage is that the blood clot will attract your inflammatory cells so here we have seen Okay, step one is a inflammation. Second step two, we have lot of inflammatory cell coming into that area, and there is an acute inflammatory response within the 24 hours. And on the third day, you can see there is a presence of macrophages. So uh, we have an acute inflammatory response. At first, which type of cell comes? At first, the neutrophils. Your lymphocyte will come. After three days, your macrophages will come. This macrophages. What is the function of its macrophages? I have told you they are coming to clear off that area clear off that debris now in a secondary intention in a wound by secondary intention in the inflammatory phase uh, there is an initial acute uh, acute inflammation is there and the macrophages will come after three days and they will clear off the debris now here in the initial hemorrhage and the inflammatory stage is same for both both your primary intention and secondary intention the initial hemorrhage stage and the inflammatory stage is same now coming to the epithelial stage what are the epithelial changes the healing part from here it is different okay from here it is different now talking about the epithelium in a primary intention in a primary healing the wound is very small so that the epithelium will proliferate and it will close the wound okay where the epidermal cells on both sides of the wound here we have epidermal cells on both sides of the wound they will proliferate to the center and they will close the wound very fast because the gap is small and they are approximated by sutures okay they can be approximated by sutures the gap is small on both end of this wound there are epidermal cells our skin cells they will proliferate and close the wound so that is called epithelial spurs okay the proliferation from the two sides of the epithelium is called epithelial spurs the epithelial spurs and the uh, proliferate and they cover the wound within 48 hours. Within 48 hours, they cover the wound and they separate. These epithelial spurs separate the underlying wound and the overlying debris. 
all the clout and debris will be on the top of this epithelium and it is known as scab okay scab all the epithelial cells the epithelial cell will separate the wound from the necrotic or the decayed material that uh, the decayed material will be on the top okay so this is called scab formation after the scab is formed the epithelium will proliferate uh, all the layers of the epithelium is formed and by five days all the epithelial layers are formed so this is what happened in the uh, in the primary invention coming to the secondary invention here also the epithelial spurs are formed but the wound is very large the wound is very large the epithelium cannot proliferate and close the wound epithelium cannot close the wound the epithelial cell will migrate but they cannot the proliferating epithelial cells do not cover the surface of the granulation tissue can you see it, it cannot cover it do not cover the surface because the wound is very large so what happens here there is a requirement of the granulation tissue okay they have to wait till there is a formation of granulation tissue they have to wait until there is granulation tissue form so the wound is very large here the epithelium cannot come and close the wound they will wait until there is a formation of a granulation tissue and what happens here uh, there is no epithelium to separate from the uh, overlying debris and the underlying connective tissue so the formation of a, a scab which cast of the scab uh, is formed which will be removed okay which will cast off because there is no epithelium to support this scab and you can see necrotic material over the wound okay now that is what you see in the secondary invention now coming to the granulation tissue uh, in healing by first intention there is no requirement of a granulation tissue or the granulation tissue formed will be very minimal please remember in the first intention healing by first intention the wound is very small it is clean cut wound it is approximated by sutures the granulation tissue present in between will be very very minimal okay so here the organization the final organization doesn't require a granulation tissue the fibroblast will proliferate okay new collagen fibers will be formed and by four weeks they will close the wound and the scarring is minimal scar is minimal okay there is minimal amount of scar tissue by four weeks they will heal but for the secondary intention there is a requirement of granulation tissue the granulation tissue there is proliferation of fibroblast there is neovascularization we have seen the steps in fine formation of a granulation tissue in the previous slide so granulation tissue is required there is proliferation of new blood vessels neovascularization fibrinogenesis all these occurs okay there is neovascularization proliferation of the fibroblast and there is formation of a scar okay the scar will uh, this is called sick cauterization okay the formation of a scar is formed and the scar will get matured okay as it matures it reduces the, the vascularity the vascularity reduce the cellularity reduce okay and here you should remember that if any structure is lost it is not replaced on your skin you have skin you have you have your hair follicles you have your sweat glands all these are there but in secondary intention it is replaced by a granulation tissue and a scar none of your hair follicles none of your sweat glands will be replaced that's why in a wounded area in a, in a scar area of your skin you don't see any hair follicles you don't see any uh, sweat glands okay so these are not replaced now what are the complications of wound healing uh, it can un undergo infection the wound can get infected that is called infected wound if there is a chance of implantation cyst what do you mean by implantation cyst now if there is a wound some of the epithelial cells may get entrapped here and by course of time what happens is that this epithelial cell present here can make a cyst okay the epithelial cell will go inside the wound and within the epithelium we can make a cyst that is called implantation cyst or you can see that the uh, area is getting pigmented in your body also you may have some kind of wound which occurred in the childhood now you can see some kind of black or brown color there that is pigmentation uh, a scar formation uh, there is a hernia incisional hernia of that area means uh, there is a dipping of your ear uh, there is a 
uh, inward protuberance of your organs into that area. There is scar formation that is hypertrophy scar or the keloid scar formation, uh, excessive contraction and sometimes a tumor can also develop at the site of a uh, trauma or wound. Now coming to the factors which help in healing. What are the factors which help in healing? In young people, if you see young children, the healing will be very fast. But what about old age? The healing will be a little slow. So if you get a wound in your young age, it will be healing very fast. And uh, in uh, old age, it will be uh, slow. If you are having good amount of diet, high proteinaceous diet, your wound will heal very fast. Okay, so there are certain things you should, if you keep your wound very clean, it will heal very fast. Okay, now there are certain factors which affect healing. So there are local factors and systemic factors. Local factors, you should prevent infection of that area, so it will heal fast. Uh, there is a proper, it should be proper blood supply. If there is a poor blood supply, then there is uh, less, I mean, it can cause the uh, delayed healing. And if there is any foreign bodies in that area, means you are stuck by a glass or some dirt is there, that should be removed. So far, uh, uh, it should, uh, as long as it is there, the infection will be there and it will prevent your healing or delay your healing. Now, movements, if you are moving that area uh, more, it can cause a delay in the healing. You should give proper rest to that area so that it will heal very fast. And exposure to ionizing radiation, it should be kept away from any radiation so that it can heal very fast and it always type, depend upon the type, size and the site of injury, okay, where the injury is occurring. Okay, if it is a large injury, it will take more time. So similarly, in the systemic factors, the age of the person in children it will heal very, very fast. In old age, it will take time. Nutrition, adequate amount of proteinaceous diet should be taken for healing. Infection, systemic infection, you may uh, you, you may see that in, in if a person is having some systemic infections or any systemic conditions, okay, uh, like your diabetes, okay, uh, in that condition, the healing is delayed. Uh, if you are using steroids, then there is a delayed healing, okay, any kind of uh, hematological abnormalities like anemia, okay, in such cases, there is delayed healing. Now, coming to a, a part called the fracture healing, how your bone heals. So far, we have seen how a skin heals. Now, here, what is about a fracture healing, how a bone fracture heals. The bone fracture heals by a process called callus formation. Now, what is a callus formation and how it is formed? So, here also we have two types of healing, the primary healing and secondary healing of the bone. So, primary healing of the bone is that when a bone, if you have a bone here, imagine this is a, a bone, it is having a fracture. I am going to fracture this bone. And if I am approximating it with plates, okay, you put plate, okay plates are there and you are approximating the bone very closely the fracture is approximated very closely then that type of union is called a primary union okay when the end of the fractures are approximated by compression plates or metal plate okay we are putting plates and we are approximating maximum okay so what happens there is a bony union take place in the bone without a callus formation okay without a periosteal callus no callus is formed outside only callus is formed inside that is called a medullary callus only callus is formed inside the bone no callus is formed outside the bone that is called a uh, medullary callus okay medullary callus is formed inside the bone but no periosteal callus means outside the bone there is no callus formation okay why? Because we have approximated it to the maximum by your plates. Now coming to secondary union. Now here we are having a bone. Okay. We are having a bone and there is a fracture. But we are not putting any plate. We are just giving a bandage or plaster. We say cast. Okay, casting. You may have seen patient putting a white cast, white plastering. Which they have got a fracture. Okay. So here what happened is that. Uh, it is the most common form. Usually, all the cases we don't go for a plating and all. Usually, we have seen that we will put a plaster. Okay, the hand or the knee or the leg when they get fractured, they put a plaster. Okay, and here what happens is that this is a type of secondary union where you can see both both your medullary callus formation. Okay, there is a medullary callus formation in the center, 
as well as there is the periosteal callus formation. Okay, so here both callus is formed. So here what happens in secondary union? There is medullary callus formation that is uh, your inside. There is osseous callus formation. There is procallus formation, and there is a step called remodeling. So first we have a bone here. So we have a callus. There is a fracture. There is a callus formation here. The callus is formed, and the callus then get matured to a osseous callus. So first formed callus is procallus, and the procallus will cause a healing here. That is osseous callus. The osseous callus in finally remodel, remodel to form a proper healing. Okay, the proper healing. So three steps are there: procallus, osseous callus, and remodeling. So what do you see in the procallus formation? What is a procallus formation? When the fracture occurs, first event to occur is a hematoma. Okay, initial hemorrhage, just like uh, our healing in the skin. The first event to occur was initial hemorrhage. Second event to occur was your inflammatory response. Third event to occur was your granulation tissue formation. Right. So similarly here also, first event to occur is a hematoma. Second event to occur is an inflammatory reaction. Third event to occur is a callus formation. Very simple. Okay. And finally, the callus is remodeled. Just like a scar formation in the healing of skin. Uh, here, the callus is remodeled. Okay. So, first step is your hematoma. Hematoma from the bleeding blood vessels or broken blood vessels in the bone. There is a... Uh, hematoma in that area and this hematoma will act as a meshwork for the blood and the fibrin clot and that will help in the formation of a granulation tissue there. Now next step there comes inflammatory response just like your skin. So first there is hematoma then comes the inflammatory response. In inflammatory response all your lymphocytes, macrophages, monocytes all will come. The monocytes or the macrophages will clear off the area. They will eat away the debris. And they will clear off that area. Now third step comes the granulation tissue formation. Very simple. It's just like your healing of your skin. Extra thing here is the callus formation. Now here also there is a granulation tissue. There is neovascularization and your fibrogenesis. There is neovascularization and the proliferation of mesenchymal cells from the periosteum. And there is a soft tissue callus formation which will join to the end of the fractured bone. So we have a a fractured bone here and there is a callus formation in that area there is a soft tissue callus formed in that area so this soft tissue callus that will act as a soft tissue callus they will attach the bone now comes the next part the callus formed will form a woven bone woven bone is an immature bone immature bone okay so here the periosteum the cells from the periosteum they make osteoblast the periosteum will give cells which have osteogenic potential they are nothing but your osteoblast the osteoblast cell what is function of this osteoblast to make bone they will lay down collagen and posterior matrix and that posterior matrix which is initially formed is called woven bone initially formed or first formed bone is called woven bone so the callus, the callus will make what a granulation tissue is formed. The granulation tissue contains periosteum cells. The periosteum cell will give rise to your, uh, your initial callus formation or woven bone. Now what's next after the initial callus formation or, or initial woven bone formation? This woven bone is an immature bone. It should be converted to a mature bone. Then that comes the osseous callus. Osseous callus formation. So the procallus which will act as a scaffold in which the osseous callus is formed and it is composed of lamellar bone or mature bone okay mature bone so this woven bone the woven bone is cleared away by the osteoclast the initially formed immature bone is cleared away by the osteoclast and what happens the cartilage and the immature bone is cleared and it makes a new lamellar bone or mature bone is formed now this mature bone after the formation of this mature bone it is remodeled, it is shaped, reshaped according to the need of the bone. Okay, that is called remodeling. Okay, so uh, after the formation of the immature lamellar bone, 
this osteoblast and osteoclast will reshape it or remodel it according to the shape of the bone okay so it is it is the final stage and that is indistinguishable from the normal bone it will look the bone which is formed after remodeling will look exactly like the normal bone okay so that is the that is the peculiarity of this fracture healing okay in the fracture healing the best peculiarity of this fracture healing is that they can make a bone which just uh, look like okay it can uh, make the bone without any difference from the normal bone so the external calyx is cleared away the intermediate callus, the com uh, compact bone is formed and the bone marrow is replaced okay the bone marrow also will be forming now this is the image we have a normal bone here now there is a fracture and there comes the hematoma here now hematoma uh, that hematoma is there hematoma can then give rise to your inflammatory response after inflammatory response there is granulation tissue the granulation tissue will act as a scaffold and there is formation of a cartilage or your woven bone so here comes the uh, cartilaginous callus is formed and there is neovascularization and this cartilaginous callus is converted into bony callus by formation of lamellar bone and it is again remodeled the lamellar bone is remodeled and is completely healed okay so here there is hematoma here hematoma and then comes the inflammation okay inflammation and here comes the uh, uh, callus okay callus formation it is called procallus formation there is cartilages callus we have woven bone okay woven bone here and that is replaced to your lamellar bone okay or more lamellar bone and that last is a remodeling in the remodeling it is remodeled and there is bone marrow the bone marrow which is lost is also come back come back the bone marrow okay, it is also remodeled okay so this is what happens here now what about the complication of this fracture healing either it can be a fibrous union sometimes the bone cannot fuse that is called non-union or it can delay the union that is delayed union all this depend upon the state of the patient so if it is an old age patient with uh, bad nutrition and all what happens there is a delayed union sometimes the bone will not fuse it's called non-union okay you have a bone here you have a fracture it will not fuse it will stay separate this is called a non-union or delayed union or sometimes it is fused with a fibrous capsule here fibrous tissue here that's called fibrous tissue. so all these are the complication of fracture healing hope you understood the tissue healing come back with a new video on another topic thank you